Hey YouTube, I hope you guys are having a wonderfully blessed day today. We're gonna do something a little bit different in this video. We're gonna actually watch the gameplay first, and then we're gonna go back and kind of talk about it. I think it will give a little bit more context to the video in whole, rather than just throwing in the three things I wanna talk about today. So I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. We played with a streamer who had over 500 viewers. Part of the way in which she dictated the conversation was definitely to entertain her viewers and stuff like that, and you have to respect that. So I hope you guys enjoy this part of the gameplay and how I just interact with her in a, in a weird and different way but what I really want to talk about is after this gameplay. So I hope you guys stick around for that part of the video as well. Hey, Lindsay, you got a mic? Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm wonderful. Um, can I ask a random question? What? What's the 777 mean? Um, it's just, um, it means a lot of different things. It's basically like a good luck number. It's a, it can be like a religious thing. It can be like a good vibe thing. It could be, um, a lucky gambling number. It's just a good, good vibe of a number, you know? All right. 777. Lady's got some energy. That energy is high. So you want to get married or what? Um... I feel like I have to ask a couple more questions, but... Oh, go ahead. By all means. Please. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> um, I'll just let you know right now, I'm streaming right now, and my chat is absolutely cracking up. <laughs> oh, hi chat. You guys want to hear some ASMR? Mm -mm. No. 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 Chat, is this person stream? Like, can someone confirm or deny? Is she not a streamer? I have uh, people in my chat asking if you're a streamer because they feel like your energy is a streamer-like energy. No, nope, nope. I'm a stripper. She is streaming? All right, well, I, I don't know what to do right now. I would love a loadout. <laughs> I'm so thrown off right now, guys. Very thrown off. So, Linz, I do have a half serious question for you. Yeah, what's that? Is there any way I could pray for you? Or anything going on in oh, your sure. life that I could be praying for you for? You wanna pray for me right now on stream? I would love to pray for you right now on stream. Probably patience. Okay. I need patience. Absolutely, I can completely understand that. Yo, Linz, I'm just gonna pray for you right now. All right, hey, real talk though, I don't, I don't really bring on religion on my stream, so I don't mean to be rude, but just make it a short one, okay? All right, I mean, I'll just pray off my, uh, off stream for you then. If that's good, like yeah. I'll, I'll just that's, yeah, it's all good. Oh, yeah, I'll just pray in my stream for you then. All right, uh, that's very sweet. Heavenly Father, um, I don't know Lindsay uh, that well. I don't know who she is. I don't know what she's going through. Um, Lord, she asks for patience. Lord, uh, I pray for patience for her. Lord, uh, most of the time anxiety um, comes in because of whatever's going on um, in her in, in her life. Um, and Lord, anxiety <laughs> comes into our lives. Uh, consistently because uh, we want control of what's going on. Lord, um, I do pray that you uh, give her that patience, Lord, and that patience is found in you because you are all satisfactory. You are the one who um, comes in and just gives us an, an understanding of peace that we could never understand. Um, that we have a joy in the future uh, based on who you are, an eternal future, not of one that's that's short. Um, Lord, we, we get to enjoy that because of who your son is, um, what he's done for us, um, and that we can freely now live this life um, in rejoicing of who you are uh, and glorifying who you are. Uh, I pray for Lindsay and that she would be able to live that type of life as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Royale. All right, donde es we going? You're so sweet. Good for you. Oh. Got one. Oh, he's on the back side. I had to play it up real quick. Might push me from the left side left? of the building. Hey, buddy, you gotta look at. Oh, he's one shot. Ah! Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. It's okay. Hey, it was really good playing with you, Liz. GG. Yeah, God bless. See you later, alligator. See ya. Hey, yeah. All right. So, 
Um, let's talk about that for a minute, guys. Okay, let's let's actually talk about that. Let's talk about this because I think this is a learning experience for all of us. Um, that this was somebody that's like, hey, I don't really want to talk about Jesus and stuff like that. So like, and I really wanted to, um, I really wanted to share with her who Jesus was. And I, she said she understood who Jesus was and what he's done for us. So like, you know, maybe just loving her a little bit in that way. Like, I don't, I don't know who she is at all. Like she might be a great Christian. I, I don't know. Like I, I generally don't know. Um, but like, I just enjoyed, I don't know, just, a learning experience um someone who you know has a big personality which i love people with big personalities because i feel like myself i have a pretty big personality maybe not that big but you know god's gifted all of us with with different gifts and i pray for Lindsay. she's got an amazing it, it seems like she's got a wonderful talent for streaming and entertaining people i pray that she would uh one day be bold enough um to share with her chat who jesus is and what he's done for us because um you know he's the best thing that's ever happened in this in this universe so um i do hope that 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 she would have that boldness i lord i pray for that boldness for Lindsay, um because if she does know um it's the best thing that's ever happened for us and i pray that she would know who uh you are as i'm in the chat the first thing i read is people talking about how she is dressed like we can't be judging you guys don't know her this one's were people judging i want to see i don't know yeah uh I think the thing I'll say on that, guys, is um, one, right? We don't know her heart, right? Um, we don't know what she does, right? Like, I'm, we're not going to judge that. And then this is the this is the big thing, guys. And, and I think this is what this is what matters, right? Um, is there's probably people, and like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call people out, right? I'm just gonna call people out for a second. I'm not gonna call out names, but I'm just gonna call all of us out because I'm not I'm not subject to not doing this as well. However, there are probably people in her stream that came over to our stream right and they were probably wondering what we would say a christian stream would say about their streamer right and because of that you don't even know how that might affect people right every word we say is an opportunity to represent jesus right and this is my question and this is a question challenging to me would jesus look at her and say ah look at what she's hanging out or definitely a stripper or something like that or would jesus go that's the type of person i would die for right that's the person that's the type of person i would die for that's the type of person that i i want to love just like as jesus says to us you're the type of person i want to die for because all of us all of us are are, are sinners all of us struggle with sin in one way or another right none of us are better than others as well so um, just kind of remember that um, as like, hey, like, do you, do other people struggle with that, right? But this is my question, right? What if some people got the look into our lives when the door is closed, right? Like, what would happen if people, what would people say if people got a look at our lives and the door is closed? Uh, the way we treat people that are close to us, but other people don't see those. What would people say? Just, you know what I mean? Um, and random guy, he says, I'm one of them. Random guy. I apologize. Uh, I apologize. Right. Um, I'll let you know that you're loved, bro. You're loved by God. He died for you. Uh, he wants to have a relationship with you. I don't know if you you know that. Um, but if you ever have questions about who God is, what he's done for you, stuff like that, dude, I want to encourage you that this is a place, a safe place to come and ask questions. You'll get honest answers, but lovingly, um, even if you disagree with us. So I just want to let you know. So you just saw us have a really awkward interaction with this streamer. And there were some things that, you know, just didn't really sit right with me, not necessarily with her but the way my community and the chat reacted to playing with her and it led me to want to make this video of three things we as christians need to stop doing completely the first thing we need to stop doing is judging people right away so often i hear christians judge a book by its cover but judging the heart of someone by the first interaction if you see someone on a street corner and they're asking for money where's your heart go first do you think oh they're just trying to make a quick buck or do you think about maybe there's actually something in their life that has gone wrong or, or try to be empathetic towards them i'm not saying one is always true and the other is not always true. However, 
my question is where does our minds go when we see something like that and i think that will tell us a lot of where our hearts are when we meet people or i'll take it a step further if we meet someone who says that they're a christian or professes christ in some sort of way but they don't act like it how do we respond do we respond to like oh how could they do x y and z do we comment on the photo do we comment on the TikTok, or do we pray for them do we ask them or try to empathize with them maybe there's something going on deep inside of them there's a root of this sin problem going on inside of them if we just try to tell people to stop doing x y and z we're not really attacking the sin problem there we're just trying to make the fruit of a tree look good even though there's something very very problem with the root if we look to just get rid of the fruit of sin the root still stands and the fruit the the bad fruit will continue to regrow and this leads to my second point stop talking from a moral high ground when we come across someone in sin, we should not be thinking about, oh, how could you ever do that? Because if you really look at your life and look at your heart, you know just as well that you as a sinner are just as capable of doing just as much evil in whatever it is as anyone else. And I know I'm already going to get pushed back from this. And I'm not saying that if people profess Christ that we can't correct them. That's not what I'm saying. However, if we want people to really follow Christ and who he is, we can't just tell them do this and don't do this. It doesn't make any sense, but rather we need to share with them truth in a loving way that convicts them, not because we are saying something that convicts them, but rather because the Holy Spirit is convicting them. We are called to build people up, not tear them down. And again, I'm not saying we don't call out sin. When it comes to talking from a moral high ground, we need to realize that when we are with and, and, and encountering someone who is struggling in sin, we need to realize that we are just like them. We need God's grace just like everyone else. We were spiritually dead in our own sin, right? Only reason we are not is because of the love and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Please show them that same love and that same grace. Do not neglect the fact that we as representatives of Christ are called to share the same amount of grace with others. The reason we follow Jesus is because we have seen the grace he gives us, not because he tells us do X, Y, and Z. We do X, Y, and Z in response to the grace that he has given us. And I think the third thing that Christians need to stop doing is stop expecting sinners to not act like sinners. When we come across someone who doesn't follow Christ, we can't expect them to do something that is contrary to their nature, that their actions, behavior, and language aren't going to be something that we would say represents Christ. Why? Because they aren't following Christ. And even if someone says they're following Christ, we don't really know that. The only way for us to see if someone's following Christ is through the life that they live. And if their life doesn't line up with the words they say, if they're a Christian, they probably don't really know what it means to follow Jesus and what it means to actually be a Christian. So show them grace and gentleness in the midst of that. And if someone really doesn't understand what it means to be a Christian, don't throw your arms up and be like, how could you not know what it means to be a Christian? But how instead can you show them and share with them the grace shown through, shown to us through Christ in a way that's loving, gentle, and that they would receive the truth and understand the truth in a way that is life-changing. Not because we are doing anything, but but God has chosen for some reason to use us broken people, remind that you are just as much as a broken person in broken places to share with people the good news of Jesus. Nobody will truly come to follow Christ because of a bunch of rules that a bunch of Christians told them they had to follow or boxes that they had to check. But people will come to know who Jesus is because of the grace shown to them, the love shown to them that Christians themselves have experienced. Remember that it was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us, that God didn't come to us expecting us to be perfect in that moment. He found us just as we are. The great thing about Jesus is he never leaves us how we were. When we come across someone who might not know Jesus, love them as they are and trust that the Holy Spirit over time 
will not leave them as they are. So quick recap of three things us Christians need to stop doing. One, stop judging people right away. Two, stop talking from a moral high ground. And three, stop expecting sinners to not act like sinners. I truly believe if we were to stop doing these three things as, as much and, and more love people where they are at, just as Christ loved people where they're at. Today I was reading the story of Zacchaeus and it just convicted me that Jesus loved Zacchaeus right where he was at and he didn't need to tell him to do X, Y, and Z in order to follow him, but rather just Jesus just being there and showing him who he is and loving Zacchaeus right where he was at led Zacchaeus to repentance. Can we do the same and just love people where they're at and share with them the good news of Christ as we go?